The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over what might be eating in your garden, those leafy plants and other vegetation, as well as what type of soil do you have? You can probably grow in it. We'll tell you why. Our guest is Garden Talk Radio host, Tiger Pelifox, and we'll answer your garden questions. The hour is full, and it starts now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to another episode of the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be with us for the next hour. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, and why not help you preserve some of what you grow. We thank you for tuning in, whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2022 through a radio app, through our parent website. That website is thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. Podcast replay, in-studio video replay, however you're capturing the program, thank you so much. If you want to be part of the program, participation, you can certainly do that as welcome. You can give us a, send us an email, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you are the conversational type, you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number Toll free, coast to coast, is 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about where your health and if you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. And that cookware is now our go-to cookware when we do anything. A uh, phenomenal piece of cookware that you should have in your kitchen. Yeah, it's a, it's a really handy. Well, what is eating my plants, Holly? We're getting that question quite a bit uh, through social media and email, Uh, whether it's deer, squirrel, rabbits, birds, or insects in which are not easily identifiable. uh, We're going to go over some of these uh, problems and how to fix them. Absolutely. So let's talk about deer. We seem to always get a lot of questions about this. If uh, If you have a deer problem, you typically will know because... You might see them eating your plants or also they are going to eat the the easy to get to plants. And you'll typically. be able to see their footprints, their hooves. Uh, one of the simplest things in which you can do is simply just purchase a bottle of Deer Defeat from DeerDefeat.com using coupon code RADIO. To save 10% off your order, that's DeerDefeat.com. We have numerous listeners that swear up and down by the product. It works. That's why we have them as a sponsor. It's not a gimmick, and that's why we're not wasting our time with them, and they're not wasting their time with you and all this other stuff. The product works, and that's why people get it. Uh, you spray it on your uh, plants. You don't want to spray it on your fruiting uh, plants. You want to spray it around the perimeter based on the time of year. Rain, snow, sleet, freeze, 30 days it'll last. It will smell for the first 30 minutes to humans, but it will not smell anymore after that to humans, but it will smell to the animals. It will repel not only deer, but rabbit and groundhog as well. So it's a product that's universal, got a lot of different options there. And um, if you got problems, that's the answer there. Yeah, people definitely swear by it. So... Aside from not deer not an impulse commercial, we're just telling no, you the truth right. here. Aside from deer defeat, if you do have deer, and maybe you want to try, uh, you ha- you're like, I want to build a fence anyway. You want to make sure that fence is going to be above six feet tall, and or you could do something where a lot of people will take fishing line. They might have a shorter garden fence for rabbits or whatever. And then uh, uh, they'll put the they'll put posts up on each corner and then draw a fishing line just period like I don't know probably every foot or so 
And then when the deer try to get to the garden, they bump their noses on the fishing line. They don't know what that is. It spooks them. They go somewhere else. Another problem that we are getting inundated with questions about is leaf miners. Now, leaf miners are a insect in which actually invade, uh, eat the import inner, inner portions of the leaf, and you see little tracks and trails. Simple um, answer to this is use cold press neem oil sprayed on the plant uh, top and bottom. This will uh, disrupt their life cycle and the larva and preventing them from reaching adulthood, uh, the new larva, and it will uh, prevent more damage to your leaf. Now, it will look like on your beets or your Swiss chart, it'll look like it got sunburned, very pale looking, but it's actually leaf miners in your um more uh, dense vegetation you will see it looks like somebody took a wider gray marker and drew all kind of ziggly lines on your leaf so cold pressed neem oil put a couple of drops of uh, castile oil uh, castile soap in that and it will work really well that's the organic way there are many different pesticides in which you can use but if you're on your edible lens or uh, edible pr- uh, plants you don't want to use that so this is the organic way cold pressed neem oil uh, right. And that's a one to two teaspoons of cold press um, to um, one quart of water. Okay. Um, so another problem a lot of people have is with slugs. And so especially on things like their hostas or just general um, areas of your garden, some people feel that you can put eggshells down. That doesn't really bother the slugs too much. If you see the slugs, you can pick them off. And get rid of them. We found that we've had success with the, the beer in the right. shallow dish. dish yeah. at, at almost ground level where they kind of l- climb up and then they fall in. Also taking a piece of cardboard and laying it in the center of the garden with like some kind of stone or something weighted on. Come out early in the morning, pull it up, and that's where a lot of the slugs are going to migrate to overnight. You can get rid of them that way. Uh, if you got chickens, there there's a, an answer for you as well. So... Um, that that's the the easiest or the most effective way if you have a few slugs it's not a big deal the also the thing you want to be aware of with the slugs is if you have a lot of um i call it trash but leaves or or organic debris around the bases of these plants you want to pull that all away almost i mean put bare soil there uh leave bare soil i know we talk about mulching but in this instance that will allow the there'll be no cover it'll dry the soil out a little bit and make it more difficult for the the slugs to get to your plants right so let's talk about soft body soft body insects like aphids a lot of times white flies right white flies um a lot of times you'll know that you'll see that the aphids and the white flies are killing the plant by sucking the life out of them Mm -hmm. so they're like the tick of the plant world you might see some wilting in one area, typically at the top of the plant. And so we have a good solution. The amazing Dr. Zymes. You go to drzymes.com forward slash garden talk and they will give you two two ounce concentrated bottles uh, for simply uh, paying shipping and handling so you can see how good the product is. And once you use that product, uh, the doctor, the amazing Dr. Zymes, you'll never find another or want to find another product. This is all organic. It's a very unique product that works very well and it kills the soft bodied insects without damaging the beneficial insects. So you spray it on the top, the bottom, the stem, all over the plant, and it works phenomenal. Again, that's drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. If you need some of these uh, coupon codes again, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the money tab at the top of the page. They're all listed for you, and it's very easy to navigate through uh, and to their websites. So soft body insects can be very damaging when they get out of control. A few, not bad, but there is times where things are out of control and you got to get things back in check and we encourage the in an organic means or manner absolutely so then we also have japanese beetles and this always comes up always 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 and so yes you can buy japanese beetles traps and people will use them and they'll say well it seems like from rescue I, yeah and they'll say you know i put this japanese beetle trap it seems like i invited every japanese beetle i put in- it under the, the tree where all the <laughs> japanese beetles we're at and now there's more well of course there's more because that is a lure in which attracts them right so yeah so you might think okay i put this underneath this tree and now all the japanese beetles are coming around and 
Yes, they are. But you want to find the opposite corner wherever you're having the problem, put the trap there. That way, if, you know, they are coming from your neighbors or something, they're going to end up in that corner and they won't affect the tree that they're attacking. Uh, you can also use phylum bio products uh, on that situation as well uh, with, uh, grub, or with a beetle gone. Uh, it's a water dispersible uh, item that you spray on your plants up to the day of harvest, and that will also get rid of the Japanese beetle, a non-chemical uh, BT product there. And you can use coupon code GARDENTALK10, save 10% on your order at phylumbioproducts.com. What else we have, Holly? Um, so we have hornworms, and so the tomato hornworm right. is. Well, know, people may not know what that is, but they have seen the bot the the the, the results of it. Right. So you say you you find this tomato or one of your you know one of your I'm going to get it tomorrow. Tomatoes. You're like you know that tomato is almost ready. I'll wait till tomorrow. Blah blah blah. And then you go out to your garden. And it looks like somebody chomped around the outside of the tomato and left the core. And then there's little, usually blackish, brownish droppings on it. That's from the tomato hornworm. So what happens is the tomato hornworm hides very well. And then at night, it comes out, eats your tomatoes, will take out a whole plant in one night. And then you can't find them because they hide so well. So what you can do is you can try to find them. I can barely see green beans on the plant to harvest them, so I'm not the one that wants to help you with that. But if you can find them, you can pull them off and get rid of them. Otherwise, we've noticed that when we take little uh, shallow tin, like tuna cans, put them on a stake and put bird seed in them near the tomatoes, the birds come along, they feed on the, those bir that bird seed, and then they have very good eyesight to catch moving critters, and they find the tomato hornworms, and they have... A nice protein meal. And you want to do that, incorporate some type of bird feeder, whether it is that tuna can on a stick or multiple bird feeders in the garden itself to start getting them in the garden before the tomatoes begin to develop so they can get that travel route of sitting on the bird feeder, looking for things and getting the tomato hornworm. Uh, other people have been able to identify them by using a black light at night. They will illuminate. So that's another way to do it. But since we did the, have been doing the bird feed uh, practice, we have had almost zero tomato hornworms to deal with because the birds have taken uh, that job away from us, which we appreciate. Another job in which you don't want to have taken away from you is knowing where your food coming comes from and knowing what's in the food in which you're consuming. Absolutely. And this is very important to, to many of us. You know, we, you like to can your food, your vegetables, fruits, what have you. But then what about those delicious meat products? You want to make, you know, some delicious jerky or sausage. You have a Walton's Inc.com has all the equipment to make these products your way to your high standards. You can find information at meatgistics.com. And Meatgistics is a community that helps people on the hows and whys to educate themselves on the meat processing um, process. Process. So you can do it right. Right. And this community is, has over 15,000 users who will help you give their opinion, help you problem solve, etc. So you can find that at meatgistics.com. If you want to buy Walton's full line of grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers, seasonings to, to go from yeah, animal they, to they, edible. That's right. They got seasonings even for your veg, you vegetarians or vegans. They've got seasonings for you to use. Yeah. And they have a lot of great equipment. You can find all of that at waltonsinc.com. Everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50 to save 10% off orders of 50 or more and get free shipping. When we come back, what kind of garden soil do you have? And are you concerned that you can't grow in it or you haven't been able to very much? We'll go over that. You're listening to Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Fleet Farm is your gardening headquarters. Stop in today for everything you need for an amazing lawn and garden. Find great deals and trusted brands. Check out their huge selection of lawn care, seed, fertilizer, and even pest control. Plus, you can pick up hand tools, power tools, and equipment. And lawnmowers to keep your space looking great. Get everything you need in one spot, all at your garden headquarters, 
Fleet Farm. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. ShipDrop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, ShipDrop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. It's a struggle to find fruit that isn't a disappointment or a waste of money, especially peaches at the grocery store. You bring them home, they turn mealy and gross. Well, Tree Riot Fruit Company has the answer. They deliver fruit straight from the farm, obsessed with quality, so you can actually experience the joy of a great-tasting fruit. Love Georgia peaches? Tree Ripe delivers the best peaches you'll ever eat directly from the farm within days of being picked. Peach season starts June 15th, and goes through August 4th. In July, they also deliver Michigan blueberries. You can find them at over 400 Peach Stops events throughout the Midwest or have fruit delivered directly to your home. All the event details and ordering information can be found at their website, tree-ripe.com. An extra bonus for you listeners, get 10% off your first purchase when you order online only, tree-ripe.com, by using coupon code HOLLY10, H-O-L-L-Y-1-0. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Make watering easy. Dripworks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night, dries clear, and odorless. It will not clog your sprayer. Deer Defeat works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Safe, effective, and works on rabbits. Money-back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use code RADIO to save 10% on your order. Deer Defeat. It can't be beat. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit blueribbonorganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. <laughs> Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water around the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. The Tree Diaper is filled with water from rain when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No more overwatering or underwatering with the Tree Diaper. Every time it rains, Tree Diaper recharges. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Water your plants and trees, whether they are down the, by the house, down the road, or in the back 40, also works under mulch. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find all the sizes they have available at TreeDiaper.com. That's TreeDiaper.com. So you may be growing in conditions that are not the best or not what you want to be growing in, soil-wise, that is. Uh, we're going to go over uh, five or six different types of soils in which many of us see in our own gardens and what we can grow in them and how possibly we can change the consistency of said soils in order to have a better gardening uh, foundation for our plants to grow in. 
Yeah, so the first one is clay soil. And clay soil, a lot of times you know it because you, you're digging your soil. It's sticky. It's kind of lumpy. It's like the stuff we it's played like, with at kids. Yeah, you know, that, it that feels like ball clay. of clay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you could amend your soil, essentially, which means that you would add um, compost to it, and then you could kind of work it in. Or if you have clay soil and maybe you want to do raised beds or containers, that's fine, too. If you want to grow in it, you can do things like... Uh, perennials and shrubs those are okay typically in clay soil and then early vegetable crops like soft berry crops will often if it because it's cool and compact and then um that's pretty much well pretty much also it. if you don't want to work the compost into the soil what you can do is add two or three inches of soil uh, two or three inches of compost let it set for six eight twelve months come back you'll be amazed of what nature has done in order to amend that soil all by itself Absolutely. Sandy soil, which a lot of people in the south and along the uh, eastern seaboard and west, the ocean has a lot of sand in their soil. Um, so what can we do with that? First of all, shrubs and bulbs, uh, such as tulips, trees, uh, roses, hibiscus, sun roses. Yeah, sun roses mm-hmm. um, they like sandy soil because they like that drainage. They yeah. don't like to be setting with wet feet as it's, as has been said. So you can add um, glacial rock dust kelp meal organic fertilizer and then you would even add um i just add compost yeah add compost i, add compost I, don't, to I don't that. think you have to yeah just it's kind of like if you have sandy or clay soil you can add compost and that's going to help help make a difference uh shallow shallow rooted plants that want like drainage like mm-hmm. lettuce um strawberries peppers corn squash zucchini greens uh you know typically okay in sandy soil now I, I will advise on a cautionary measure when it comes to growing corn in sandy soil uh corn gets tall and when things get tall they become a wind screen and if you're in sandy soil with a lot of corn and a good wind comes and a lot of rain though that's a good chance that corn is going to be laying down because it doesn't have a way of foundationally locking itself into the ground that makes a lot of sense so we're going to talk about silty soil, and silty soil is uh, soft. It's um, it's going to have a lot of nutrients. It's going to hold moisture. This is something that you you kind of want. Uh, most yeah, you want this. Uh, most vegetables grow well in this. Fruit crops uh, thrive in the silty soil, um, and and it, acqu- it has some drainage to it, but it also has some moisture holding capabilities as well. Right. So then there's peaty soil. So I guess if you live near wetlands, I would assume because a, a bog, lot of bog, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you probably have that that peaty soil, and it's going to feel really damp, spongy. It's typically darker. It does have it has a higher level of the peat, so the drainage you could you it might not drain like as growing well. a sponge. Right, <laughs> it might not drain as well. So. But you can, again, mix compost in and, and see what you can do. What grows good in um, peaty soil? Uh, shrubs. So shrubs do That well. seems to be the universal answer on this. If you have, what kind of soil do you have? Doesn't matter. Put a shrub in. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it's like shrubs are just... Uh, very they're, versatile. They're very versatile and they boost your gardening, um, uh, what's it called, self-esteem. So yeah, you can do that. Otherwise, vegetable crops such as brassicas... Legumes, root crops, uh, salad crops do well in the well-drained, um, spongy peat soil. Yeah, it, it holds moisture, but also it, allow, it doesn't you know hold too much moisture like the clay does. Uh, chalky soil. <clears throat> chalky soil. Yeah, what is chalky soil? So this is like, it's a little bit grainier. When, when you live too close to a school. Yeah. So this is like maybe if you live near a quarry yeah. or something, okay. you have like this stony... I would probably call it more like stony or or, soil. or it's something that many of us may be experiencing because we are gardening in a place where a former homestead used to be and there was a used to be a road here we guess because there's a lot of gravel in this particular area of the garden. Yeah. That's kind of what we're talking about here. Absolutely, especially if you live in an older area, you know, a lot of neighborhoods were established in the 1940s, 50s, now now things have changed, homesteads, what have you. So yeah, you might find some chalky soil. Um, a lot of times, though, that it is alkaline, so that could be a problem because you need a little bit of acidity, so you might end up with like... So gosh. you're looking at a, a number higher than seven. 
uh, or you want your pH to be about 7 across the board. Alkaline, you're looking between 7 and 14. Probably you're looking at more of a 9-ish, 8.5, 9-ish on this. So you're going to have to lower that pH yeah. on your uh, if you're in this type of situation. So you might and, have to add fertilizer. And we recommend soil test. Oh, absolutely. From your local university extension yes, office. because that's going to give you the best. It's extension. going to give you a starting point. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're just guessing and you may be wasting a lot of time guessing and spending money on products that you don't need or you're damaging it more than what you could have been if you just got the soil test for a fraction of what you paid for all the products. Right. So that is, uh, that's the chalky soil. Loamy. The loamy soil. Loamy so this soil. Is, I think this is another. Oh, first of all, chalky soil. What, oh, chalky what, soil. what can we, uh, spinach, beets, sweet corn. Trees. Uh, trees, cabbage. Bulbs. And, yeah. Shrubs. More Got, shrubs. More shrubs. More shrubs. Yeah, whole field of shrubs. <laughs> um, and then loamy soil is going to be a good mix of sand, silt, clay. This is kind of what you want. Yeah. Or silty. Like yeah. Like loamy or silty. I think it's 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 kind of those words are kind of fun to say, um, but loamy is good for all sorts of things to grow in because it's going to give you typically um, nice nutrients. If you do feel like nutrients are depleted a little bit, you can always add organic matter. You can add organic uh, fertilizer to kind of give it some boost. But if you just add something like compost, some leaves, chemical free um, seed free grass clippings, yeah, it's going to give it that uh, what it needs. And then worms will come and make their homes in it. Um, so, yeah, most crops will do well in loamy soil. Yeah, that's what you typically will see if you're if you're looking at compost um, that you have bought. It's going to have that kind of consistency. Yes. I would encourage you, say, say you're new to gardening or you're not sure. or You're or, just an average, you're just a, a person that wants to garden to grow something. Right. Or... You never investigated your soil, uh-huh. you just, for ease of whatever, you just decided to go with containers, raised beds. <clears throat> Maybe you, you moved into a home that right. had raised beds. Um, what we would suggest is figuring this out because, A, it's probably good to know what's underneath your soil, and B, um, maybe you have a gold mine of nice, silty, or loamy soil that you could just grow in. And, and, you know, we're getting into the summer months now, and your garden is probably mostly, or if not all the way planted. But this is a good lesson to know what you, what you have and why the plants are reacting the way they are if you are not familiar with the types of soil. If you're in a very sandy soil or a very clay soil, plants react very differently to both of those situations and those, those uh, mediums. So by figuring out now, and the advantage... To doing this now is if you do need to improve your soil by the means of, let's say, trucking in some compost or raised bed mix, right now, as uh, most of the country goes, oh, well, gardening is already, I mean, most of the garden centers and homes, uh, uh, places are, well, we're already done with gardening. We got to figure out, you know, plan for Halloween and Christmas. They have deals, they have sales. Deals, deals, deals. They want to move merchandise. So this would be the time in which instead of paying X dollars for a load of compost earlier, you could save a certain amount now. And you know And the, always ask. The next dinner party you go to, instead of talking about gas prices, you can talk about, hey, by the way, I have clay soil and I live near a river. What kind of soil do you have? And and if you do this at a dinner party in which of people you don't <laughs> like they will never ask you to yeah, come back. Yeah, they might be like, we don't want yeah. soil guy. Here. And then you don't have to go ever again. <laughs> and then you can just hang out at home in your comfy clothes. There you go. Exactly. Well, another problem in which we have, uh, in, in addition to possibly going to dinner parties in which we don't want to be part of, but we have to because whatever the reason, is the Japanese beetles, larva, uh, uh, Japanese beetles flying around the yard and larva and um, all this, all the problems that we face with that. Right, and what better way to prevent these pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larvae? Grub gone. Well, weevils and boars too. Right, um, Grub Gone is an easy to apply granular product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control these grub invaders. Uh, phylum Bioproducts create this naturally occurring bacteria 
Grub Gone and Non Chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests, and it's safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. If you've got those Japanese beetles already flying around your yard, and if you don't, be ready because they're going to come. Uh, Beetle Gone is the answer. It's the it's an organic water dispersible powder that can be sprayed directly on your edible plants up to the day of harvest. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. And when you go there and you purchase these products, you can save money by using coupon code GARDENTALK10 at checkout to save 10% on your order. Hang out with us. Garden Radio, Garden Talk Radio host Tiger Pelifox will be with us right after this. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. White flies on your tomatoes is bad news. They will suck the nutrients from your tomato plants, which will quickly become weak and may not be able to carry out photosynthesis. Leaves will wilt, turn pale or yellow. The plant will become more prone to diseases. Growth will be stunted and the production of tomato fruit will suffer. A simple way to eliminate them is with spraying the amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator at a rate of one ounce per quart of water. When you spray on soft bodied insects, it kills them. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the day of harvest and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Are you tired of mixing and matching soil amendments to give your garden what it needs to flourish? Try Climate Guard, the nutritionally complete all-in-one organic fertilizer made with ethically derived NPK, beneficial bacteria, crop boosting fungi, humic acid, and silica. Climate Guard uses cutting-edge microbiology and ethically derived plant nutrition to produce the same results as conventional fertilizers without the negative environmental impacts. Each Climate Guard pellet is infused with a high-performance blend of living organisms that will continue building a rich ecosystem in your soil long after application. Available in 7.5 and 15-pound bags, Climate Guard is delivered directly to your door and available for order at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. A non-selective herbicide that is also USDA certified, you bet, no more weeds by Naturally Green Products. The same great company that brings you no more bugs, no more weeds, kills weeds with no harsh chemicals, no glyphosate. No More Weeds is a commercial grade vinegar base with a propriety sticking agent. Great around pools, decks, patios, etc. Visit natgreenproducts.com, enter promo code WEEDS, W-E-E-D-S, and buy three one gallon size units, get the fourth one free. Spring is around the corner, folks, and Algae Men reminds you that this year, when it's time for spring cleaning, don't forget about the outside of your house. Algae Men is southeastern Wisconsin's go-to for exterior cleaning, including roofs, siding, decks, and concrete. So if you spot ugly black stains or green splotchy stuff on your home, let Algae Men get rid of it for you. We can restore the area back to its original look, not only in a timely manner, but also at an affordable cost. For a free estimate, visit us today at algaemen.com. Algae Men, we clean areas that you don't want to. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest from their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. Chapin has the tools you need to water, feed, and protect your garden. We make equipment for lawn and garden care. And 
And we are always innovating to help make your next growing season a success. Our newest products are the 5010 Rose Duster, watering tools including hose nozzles, sprinklers, and timers, the mixes on Exit Backpack Sprayer that mixes concentrate as you spray. You can find all products at www.chapinmfg.com, major online retailers, home improvement stores, and hardware stores near you. Thanks for listening to the Guardian with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Guardian with Joe and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zyme, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. Tiger Pelifox moments away, but first, a message from Simple Grow. Are you worrying about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you're getting 100% worm casting, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow all natural and odor free worm castings. There's only one ingredient, worm castings. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers for indoor and outdoor use or you for indoor and outdoor use. You can or, use it anywhere. <laughs> or by the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload. Check what Simple Grow 100% worm castings can do for your plants in order today at simplegrow.com. Well, Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and bring in our guest for this week. Tiger Palafox is one of the three hosts of Garden America Talk Radio. He grew up in San Diego, running around his family's nursery. He hosts and produces a local television segment named Eco Revolution that focuses on green products, events, people, or businesses. Tiger specializes in irrigation systems and creating edible landscapes. Welcome to the program. Hey, thank you guys very much. I'm happy to be here. We are happy to have you, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the program and our listeners. All right. Let's get started, huh? (laughs) We're getting into the summer months, and we want to save water. Water retention is important. What are some of your best water-saving garden tips? Well, being here in California, we are, I think, are probably under the most strict guidelines when it comes to watering. So we really focus on being effective with our watering. And I think that a lot of people make the mistake of like, um, you know, saying, oh, well, you're watering. Well, that's just always wasting. And it's not so much you're wasting water. You want to be effective when using it. And so by means of being effective, it's how you water your landscape, whether it's your lawn whether it's your plants, you know, whether it's your fruit trees, whatever it is, being effective. So understanding what best suits those uh, landscapes for the water that they're going to need. Um, as an example, if you have a lawn and it's a flat surface, you can water that with pop-up sprinklers and you can water them for seven or eight minutes. And that's great. That's wonderful. Um, no big deal there. But if that lawn is sloped at all, and you water for seven or eight minutes, a lot of that water could be running off into the storm drain, and you got to be much more careful with that watering. So you might want to change the sprinkler heads to something like an MP rotator, which is a low-flow sprinkler head, or put multiple start times on your irrigation timer, which means that you might want to start that time at maybe 1 a.m., run it for a couple minutes, and then again at 3 a.m. and run it for a couple more minutes, and then again at 6 a.m. and run it for a couple more minutes. So you got six to seven minutes of watering, which you would normally do on a regular basis on a flat lawn, but you're doing it over a period of time, so it gives it a chance to absorb in that landscape. Um, Now, when it comes to plants, whether it be a drip or pop-up sprayers or a soaker system, you want to make sure that you're just soaking the ground so that way the roots get the water and you're not wasting water in areas that maybe don't have landscape. Now, you water, you, you spoke about the lawn and watering in the middle of the night. Is that, because we've heard stories, of, oh, you only watered it. Is that so the water can absorb and we're not worrying about a lot of the evaporations, and especially in the Southern California area where it's just hot all the time? 
Yeah, and you know what? I might be talking a little bit regional. In okay. Southern California here and a lot of these dry areas, we don't mind watering at 10 p.m. midnight because we don't have the disease issues right. that a lot of people do in the south or maybe in the Midwest um, where they got high humidity issues, where they get mold and different fungal issues in their lawns, right? In, this, in, in Southern California, we can water our lawns at 10 p.m. And we know it's going to dry the next day and not create a disease environment. Now, if you do live in the south or a high humidity area, you do want to water something right before uh, the sunrise. So that way you can maximize uh, the absorption of water. But you also want to make sure that it evaporates when the sun comes up. So, um, yeah, you got to be a little bit regional when you come to times of watering what time you water. Um, but here in Southern California, I can say we can water at night and it'll absorb. It'll stay in the soil. The chance the, the plants will get a chance to absorb it. And we don't have the same things like uh, rust or uh, brown spot or, you know, sooty mold that, you know, some of the other areas have. Right. Now, you are one of the three hosts of Garden Talk, uh, Garden America Talk Radio Show, heard on Biz Talk Radio Weekly. You, John Bagnowski, Brian Maine. Uh, how did all three of you wind up uh, getting together and doing this? And how long have you been doing uh, Garden America uh, on Biz Talk Radio? Yeah, so um, Brian Maine and John Bagnasco have been doing the program for a, a number of years. Before it was Garden America, it was a program called Garden Compass, and even before that, it was another program. Um, you know, there was a, uh, a couple, Sharon and Bruce Osakala, that were also involved with the program at that time. When um, Sharon and Bruce retired, Oh, wow. I think it was maybe, you know, more than, you know, 70, seven years ago, um, I got the opportunity to join, join the program. Um, in the program of Garden America, we try to focus on real garden habits, real garden techniques. Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed in the market, there's a lot of uh, a flipping or <laughs> HGTV programming right. yep. that kind of leans to gardening and it they, people think they can make things happen overnight or or they can kind of make things uh, flower within a, a small time frame. And us of us gardeners kind of know that that's not really the case. And so we kind of create try to create a program that would um, show people the real effort behind gardening and, the, and what it really takes. And so I got involved because owning a family nursery here in San Diego, um, I have a background in horticulture. But at the same time in landscaping, as you mentioned before, you know, my specialty is in irrigation where I really can teach people how to effectively use irrigation. And John's specialty is in plants, plant knowledge, varieties, um, planting techniques. And then Brian, we, we like to label him as our color commentary. Okay. He's a great guy that um, is our, our radio focus. And he, he brings the layman terms into what John and I are talking about. But it's what we need, right? right. Because not everybody out there is an expert in gardening and you know knows what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning an echium plant or an allium or uh, you know, sansevieria or anything like that. But – you know, Brian brings it down into terms where people can understand it that are just the home gardener. And, and that's honestly what we want to cater to. We, do, we, we want to boost gardening as an overall topic. And in the past few COVID years, we've noticed that gardening has boosted. So why not embrace the new members of our community and get them to be successful? Because a, success, a successful gardener is uh, someone that's going to garden for the future. You know, Nobody just gardens for today. We all garden for tomorrow. And, and I noticed John is big on his roses. He loves his roses. <laughs> yes, he loves his roses, right? So speaking about the uh, the COVID times and the pandemic, now your family owns a garden center or a nursery. Now thinking about pre-pandemic versus now, comparatively, what are some of the changes that you have seen, whether it be buying habits or increase in buying habits or trends or anything like that? So pre-pandemic versus now, I, I would almost say that we are at pre-pandemic levels. So um, we are back now to pre-pandemic levels. But before this, the past couple of years, we've been just a huge surge in, in gardening. 
um, in whether it's been vegetables or houseplants or trees or shrubs or soil or pots, it's almost like we couldn't ever keep anything in stock because people were just so interested in the idea of gardening. Um, and we live in San Diego and our garden center is in San Diego where we have a mix of um, small homes and also apartments and also large properties. And so people would come in and buy containers. People would come in and buy 20 fruit trees and people would come in and buy just small little flowers for their beds. Um, so in terms of, you know, what's been happening in a trend, Houseplants have been a thing, a number one trend across the board. You know, that was pre pandemic into now. The houseplant focus, the houseplant rave is still going on. And I think we see that by all the, the varieties of houseplants that are out there that are being introduced. And I think we see that by the uh, <laughs> amazing dollars that are put on particular varieties. You know, when you look at a, you know, variety of uh, philodendron or some, um, you know, different polthos or, or different uh, ficuses and you're seeing them go for, you know, three, four hundred dollars for a four inch plan. You're like, oh, my gosh, that's some, I wish I could get that back in the day when I had 40 of them. <laughs> right. But um, but, um, you know, so houseplants are definitely driving a trend. Um, edible gardens have been a hot topic pre pandemic. And I will say, and it's, I, I don't mean to be gloom or doom, but as we move into a, um, money pinching era where I think some people are going to be looking towards on how to save that, save that money in their home, edibles will be another hot topic where, you know, people will be growing their own produce. It's very easy to grow your own lettuce, grow your own tomato, grow your own, um, vegetables and produce. So, you know, that will be another thing that will continue to grow, I feel. But the benefit of that is that we get such a cool variety of vegetables. I mean, the variety of tomatoes, the variety of peppers, the varieties of lettuces out there on the market today. I, 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 it's so amazing because they are so flavorful. They grow so well in different environments. And, you know, I feel bad for the people 30, 40 years ago, go that were, um, you know, with the limited selection, but what we have now is just amazing. I mean, you can have a cherry tomato that just tastes like sugar and, you know, your kids would think it's a dessert. So there's a lot of, of edibles out there on the market. And then the, the last thing is um, just the idea of uh, what we started the program with in the sense of a little bit more water saving or more local, more native landscapes. Um, no matter where you're at, whether you're trying to save water or not, I think people are moving towards that native landscape look just because the ecosystem, the environment that you live in, they're trying to embrace it versus to fight against it. You know, you see less people trying to force varieties of plants into their landscape and just working with the cool native plants that they have wherever they may live. That's awesome. So uh, right now we are talking with Tiger Palafax. He is one of the three hosts of Garden America Talk Radio. So let's uh, let me ask you this. Some people may need may need a lot of space for fruit, fruit trees or fruit producing plants is that true and are there some that you would recommend that take up less space for fruit trees or fruit producing plants so let's start off with fruit trees um, a lot of people don't know this but fruit trees like stone fruits apples nectarines plums pears peaches um you can grow those in actually very confined space in the sense of um there's a a process where you can put three trees in one hole so you can put three apples in one hole and you can have an apple producing early season, mid season and late season. So you always have an apple. So they don't need a lot of space. And there's actually people that will graft apples in pears and pears and different trees on the same tree itself. So you always have something in production. And I really do think that's a great way to go in case you're looking for a space saving because – Let's be real. If you have one apple tree, you're not eating all those apples. Right. You're not you're not eating all those peaches. You're not eating all those pears. So why not make it where you have a uh, a limited tree space, but you get a few apples throughout the whole year? You're going to use those a lot more. Um, so there are some techniques when it comes to stone fruits. Um, they can be in um, – there's a lot of varieties that are dwarf nowadays that can be in a – like a whiskey barrel sized container 
Um, so, you know, if you're looking for something on a patio or a porch or small area, there are some dwarf stone fruit trees. But like I said, if you're looking for a confined space and you only have a few uh, feet to spare for your fruit trees, you can fit them in a hole. Now, if you are growing a citrus, you know, that's a different story. Um, citrus trees, if you're in a confined space, I would just recommend putting them in something the size of a uh, half whiskey barrel and keeping them in that because that's going to really restrict the growth. You're going to be able to maximize that. And if you're a lemon eater, you will never be able to eat all the lemons on that dwarf citrus that it produces. Um, lemons are ever bearing. And so it just means they're constantly in and out of production. And I have a lemon tree in my backyard and I am constantly giving away lemons. So, you know, lemons are very specific, but if you're an orange or a mandarin or a lime, those are seasonal. And so you got to be a little bit more cautious with that. But nonetheless, when the tree gets to mature size, I don't know of any family, unless it's a family of 10 or 12, that's going to use up all that citrus on that tree. So um, there's a lot of great ways to use fruit trees in a small environment, whether they be stone fruits or citrus, um, and they'll make it work. And uh, if you're in the Midwest or areas where it does freeze, you know, I just took a trip to England not too long ago. And they have these things called orangeries. Um, they're basically big indoor greenhouses where they move their citrus in for the wintertime. And, um, you know, maybe you don't have an orangery, but you do have an area that maybe you can move that citrus tree inside a, uh, a front room that gets a lot of light or a greenhouse. And um, that's the nice thing about keeping them in containers is that you can still get citrus, but um, you just have to move them into a controlled environment through the wintertime. Fantastic. So we've really enjoyed having you on the program. How can people find out more about you and, and your radio show? Well, you know, thank you so much for having me on the program. And, you know, it's um, always fun to talk gardening with people and talk gardening with people all around the country. So, um, you know, we love uh, people visit gardenamerica.com. Um, we do air our show on Saturday mornings. Um, and we start at 815 Pacific time normally but um on our facebook we have old programs where we've already taped them and you know there's all kinds of topics that we kind of cover and kind of go from there but um if you want to see a list of them go to gardenamerica.com well tiger we greatly appreciate the time you've offered holly and myself and all of our listeners and we thank you for that and the education which you've provided all of us oh thank you guys i mean it's been my pleasure i love chatting gardening so anytime you guys want to talk just give me a ring okay absolutely and when we come back it's your garden questions our garden answers this is the garden with joy and holly radio show got a question for joey and holly send it via email anytime to garden talk radio at gmail.com Fleet Farm is your gardening headquarters. Stop in today for everything you need for an amazing lawn and garden. Find great deals and trusted brands. Check out their huge selection of lawn care, seed, fertilizer, and even pest control. Plus, you can pick up hand tools, power tools, and equipment. And lawnmowers to keep your space looking great. Get everything you need in one spot, all at your garden headquarters, Fleet Farm. 90% of the world's flowering plants require pollination to reproduce. Without pollinators, we humans would not survive. Here at Finding Nectar, a Denver suburb-based nursery providing flowering plants that are bee, butterfly, moth, and bat friendly. We are striving to get more pollinators into the backyards of Colorado. Together, we can increase the pollinating population one plant at a time. Affordable plants. Check all the plants out at 1550 Highway 72 in Arveda and at FindingNectar.com. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's invisible, 
seals the wood from the inside out and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. A little bit of summer is what the whole year's all about. Barbecues, parties with friends. The fun is endless. Unless the sun or thunderstorms have damaged your outdoor furniture. Keep it looking brand new with custom protective covers from coversandall.com. They have fabric choices for days that are 100% waterproof, coated to protect against sun and can be custom designed for any size or shape and placing or removing them. Easy peasy. Visit coversinall.com and use code GARDEN25 at checkout to save 25% on your purchase. Japanese beetles show up in summer for a feeding frenzy in your garden and they are the worst party guest. Feeding on leaves, then laying eggs in your lawn for next year. Japanese beetles can decimate your plants and trees. Protect your plants with Japanese beetle traps from Rescue. New this year, Rescue has refilled lures to use the same trap again the next year. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular Rescue Fly in Yellow Jacket Traps. Learn more at Rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E dot C-O-M. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloominteasyplants.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Your questions are answers moments away. You got a question, you can send it over via email, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, or give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number, toll free, coast to coast, 1 800 927 show, 1 800 927 7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited. So order is not proclamationgoods.com. All right, let's go to the questions. This question is sponsored by Fleet Farm and fleetfarm.com. I have been growing garlic for about five years. It seems my garlic bulbs get smaller each year. I'm going to cut my scapes off today to see if that helps. My question is, when do I harvest the bulb? When the leaves are brown, I don't want another bag of healthy plants that uh, I want. I don't want to have another big, healthy plant that produces a small size bulb. Help. All right. That comes from Ted. Uh, thank you for the question, Ted. The best time to harvest your garlic is three to five weeks after you've cut the scapes off. We're talking about hardneck garlic. Or whenever the lower two sets of leaves from the ground up are dry or are dying back. That's the best time. And when we harvest our garlic, we set aside the largest bulbs, which will contain the largest cloves in which we will plant the, fo- the, the coming year. The larger the bulb, the larger the clove, the larger the clove, the better opportunity the coming year. When you plant that large clove, you will have large bulbs. So hope that helps. Uh, this question is also sponsored by Fleet Farm and fleetfarm.com i have hostas with shredded leaves are these slugs 
Do I do the beer and tuna cans or is there a better way? Should I cut off the damaged leaves? Love your show. I'm growing most leafy greens in used toddler pools. There's better than they're better than building rice beds. Okay, if you've got hostas uh, and they're shredded leaves, yes, that is a slug problem. Number one, is it damaging the plant? They are really concerned by such uh, uh, damage. If you are or it's bothering you, yes, uh, beer in uh, tuna cans or containers slightly elevated above the ground, which you're going to have to dig and bury them for the slugs to be attracted by beer that is very high in the hops. They like the hoppy beer and um, you have to reapply the beer after a rain, but um, it will work and it will detour the or it'll kill the slugs in the area. So you want to put the cup of beer or the container of beer to the corner of where the in, the infestation is happening to draw or lure them out of your hostas or the problem area. All right, Holly, let's go to the hotline and um, go to Scott, who is listening to us either on, and I don't know the answer to this, either uh, WNAX, WNAX 570 out of Yankton, South Dakota, or KFEQ uh, 680 out of or, uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. Yes. My name is Scott. I just had a question on chicken manure, putting it on your for tomatoes and the rest of your garden, how to do it and how much and if it's beneficial at all, if it's too strong or whatever. Thank you. All right, Holly, can we help Scott with his chicken manure question in regards to tomatoes and the garden? Absolutely. So with chicken manure, you do want to let it age about six months or more. So before you put it on your garden soil, you just put it somewhere, let let time do its job and then after six months you can certainly use it in your garden all right well with that being said we are out of time and we thank you for yours did you miss any portion of the program today or would like to revisit it well hey you can by going to our parent website which is the wisconsin vegetable gardener.com and clicking on the season six tab at the top of the page or sending us an email garden talk radio at gmail.com we'll send you the link to this program uh, tune in next week. We're going to talk about tomato maintenance that you need to do right now, as well as planning for your fall garden. Our guest will be author Amy Pennington, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. Mm-hmm.